Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Volleyball Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Whether you live in rural Iowa or in the big city, the Iowa Network Services family of companies and your local provider are working together to keep you connected by offering technology and business solutions like internet, data networking, and other business services. The INS family of companies keeping communities connected today and tomorrow. Fairway, along with Mondelez Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay is a proud sponsor of the 2014 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Volleyball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Cedar Rapids, Iowa, the city of five seasons, where today the U.S. Cellular Center is the place to be as Iowa Farm Bureau presents the Iowa Girls High School Volleyball Championships. One championship trophy has already been handed out, and now we move to the 4A matchup where Harlan, the defending champions, take on West Delaware, a team who has been to the state tournament three straight years. Welcome back to our broadcast. I'm Eric Braley, joined by my good friend Sandy Stewart and Sandy this is a big showdown you here know, today. It's, it's been a great tournament. These teams have battled all the way to get here. It's going to be a great finals match today. Both teams have been carried by some strong performers. Let's take a look at one of the key performers for West Delaware, a senior libero. She doesn't have a lot of kills, but what does she do for their back row defensively? You know, she's really a strong leader for that team. She covers the court well, helps them set up their fast offense. A libero who can serve tough, one of the leaders on the team and aces as well. And then just a, a team leader as a senior looking for the school's state team title. And then for Harlan, arguably one of the best players in the state, this is number 10, Jess Shabin. Jess Shabin does it all. An Iowa State recruit, leads their team. She's been their go-to player all year, and uh, she'll have to have a great game today to take them to the championship. Just moments away from the starting lineups in the opening serve as Harlan and West Delaware. The fans, they're not really dressed for the winter <laughs> weather, but they are here getting warm and cozy exactly. in the student section, trying to do their part to cheer on their respective schools. And then Harlan, wow, Angie Spangenberg, the head coach, 140 wins, just 19 losses in four years at Harlan. She's been head coach for 22 years and is closing in on 600 total victories. And on the other side of the bench, West Delaware, led by that man right there, Brett Mather. And he has been coaching for 21 years, 19 of them at West Delaware, 623 total victories. Let's now go to public address announcer Scott Whirling. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the U.S. Cellular Center and the 2014 Iowa Girls High School State Volleyball Tournament. This is the Class 4A Championship match. Now, let's meet the teams. From the visitors on the scoreboard, the Harlan Cyclones. Number three, Jordan Mosier. Number four, Brenda Hopkins. Number five, Morgan Perkins. Number six, Megan Huebner. Number seven, Claire Klein. Number nine, Maggie McGrath. Number 14, Emma Arenholtz. And number 16, Julia Sorfenden. The assistant coaches, Chad Swanson, Carrie Shaven, 
Willie Boffman and Trisha Spangenberg. And now, the starting lineup for your Harlan St. Clubs. Number eight, Kinsey Swanson. Number 10, Jess Shabin. Number 11, Ellie Cleaver. Number 12, Jessica Duval. 13, Taylor Wagner. Number 15, Taylor Frederick. And the libero, number one, Asia Cleaver. The head coach, Angie Spangenberg. And now for the home team on the scoreboard, the West Delaware Hawks. Number two, Jade Putz. Number four, Anna Toll. Number five, Mariah Kleitsch. Number nine, Caitlin Reth. Number 10, Taylor Zeezer. Number 12, Cassie Eilers. Number 14, Aaron Goebel. And 15, Haley Linus. The assistant coach, Shay Putz. And now, the starting lineup for your West Delaware Hawks. Number one, Curly Ketchum. Number three, Addison Brooks. Number six, Bridget Hoffman. Number eight, Haley Morrison. Number 11, Marley Boyce. Number 13, Kristen Wegman. And the libero, number seven, Emily Toll. The head coach, Brett Mather. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials for today's contest. First referee, Jenny Malsum. Second referee, Mary Walling. Line judge, Kim Pettick. Line judge, Jan Duffy. It's time for volleyball! There's a look at your starters for Harlan. And again, the record that they have coming into this matchup, 40 victories, just two losses. They won the state title last year. They also won the state basketball championship as well, so they are primed and ready. And on the other side, here's West Delaware's starting rotation. A very experienced team. Exactly. They've, they've uh, been here a couple times, first time to the finals in a few years, and uh, feel like they're a team of destiny. They, they want to come here and win it all. So the stage is set. We've already handed out one championship trophy. It's a long, fun day of volleyball here from the U.S. Cellular Center in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And just keep it on Iowa Public Television all day long. We'll be here handing out a lot of hardware. So. West Delaware from Class 4A taking on Harlan and Looks watching like those uh, semifinals. It was pretty exciting <laughs> yesterday. Amazing. Two great teams to get here. and They've got a great uh, crowd on both sides of the arena here following their team, cheering them on. Here you see Coach uh, Spangenberg, Coach Mather kind of getting their, uh, their loosened up here before the match and ready to roll as teams get to their place on the court. Officials are ready and uh, but ready to start this great uh, 4A finals. And again, West Delaware, they began the year with 31 straight victories. You know, pretty amazing. They didn't lose till late in the year when they played a couple of 5A schools, and uh, that's their only blemish on their record. They're 45-2 and two with two losses to 5A, and here we go. Both teams have played real tough schedules to be primed and ready for this, and right out of the gates, going to the middle and getting a kill. Fantastic. You know, West Delaware has a very balanced attack. They've got five hitters with over 100 kills. So they're going to be moving the ball around a lot today to uh, a variety of uh, attackers. Here's Jade Putts in with the serve. The Hawks get on the board first. Harlan. They're more one or two dimensional, not as balanced on that front line as what West Delaware has. Yeah, you're going to stare out of bounds. It was not touched. So a quick 2 0 lead. Yeah, a couple of uh, sets to Taylor Frederick, who is their number two hitter. I'm surprised they're probably going to probably go to see uh, Jeff Shaben here on this attack to get that uh, get that ball back. 
Here's the sophomore serving it up for West Delaware. Outside little tip hit the antenna that's out of bounds. And West Delaware looking good right out of the gates up three to zero. Yeah, they're serving tough, keeping uh, Harlan kind of out of their passing routine. So great tough server coming in here for the back row for West Delaware. Jade putts good another cuts. tough serve, but a nice pass out of Harlan. Cross court attack. West Delaware in system and look out. Holy buckets, West Delaware. They worked their tails off to get to this position and let's look at the replay here. Fantastic, right between the middle block. They do run a very fast offense, Addison Brooke, and she leads their team in blocks and kills and she's active in the game right now. Harlan, the defending champions, looking to get on the board. <laughs> Not on that point, five to zero. West Delaware hitting on all cylinders. And Harlan will use their first of two timeouts before they score a point here. A little shell shocked. Mm -hmm. Well, I think like the so West Delaware just feel like they're on a mission this year. Very focused. They had a five game match or five set match win against uh, Marion and uh, it kind of showed their medal uh, coming back after winning two sets ahead 23 19 and then losing the next two games to have to win it in five. And here you see the uh, Harlan faithful trying to cheer on their team to pick up their game a little bit. And here is the road to this state championship match. Harlan at the top of your screen, sweeping everybody, making quick work and just doing what they've done all season long. West Delaware, as you mentioned, had to work a little bit harder, almost swept Marion, but to Marion's credit, rallied from being down, forced that fourth and then fifth set but Harlan, it's tough to be the number one ranked team defending champion. Target on your back all year long. A buzzer went off yeah. here, and that is a mistake. I don't know if they'll do a redo. Exactly. There's a little a table malfunction over there. Hopefully they get the buzzers figured out, but that was a huge block by West Delaware. They are just going out, showing the, the team that they are this year, and why they're uh, in the finals. So the tough serving. And balance play by West Delaware. Oh. Harlan, they're going to score some points. They're down, but definitely not out of this. But again, keeping the foot on the pedal, West Delaware. Amazing. You know, amazing uh, play at the net. You've got a tough little server. Jade Putts coming in, doing a nice kind of a jump float serve, mixing things up. And they just haven't been able to pass the ball to get into their offense. Putts, a sophomore, listed at five foot two inches, a defensive specialist. And she's been. One of the players of the match here in the early going, seven to zero. The attack on the outside, good back row defense, keeping it alive, that's Morrison. Good hustle on both sides on the defensive side of the court. Little collision in the back row, tip good. over the net. Now Harlan's on the right side of your screen, West Delaware on the left. Nice long rally. Let's see who's gonna get this one. There's your, your libero, your key player there in the back row, Toll. Great energy, oh. let it go, and that was the right decision. Right. Did she touch it? So Harlan's calling for a touch. The officials don't see a touch. It flew out wide. And I tell you, this is quite a, quite a show for West Delaware to come out and uh, let's watch that again. Nope, I think she tried, but she, she missed. She wanted to. So good miss. It's <laughs> tough when you're playing that back that road fast. to the side. Do I let it go or do I exactly. pop it up? Look at that nice dig. Set her into transition. And the rally continues. So this is amazing. West Delaware has come to play. Harlan takes their second timeout. Let's, Let's watch that replay here again. Too hot to handle for the Harlan player, and it goes out of bounds. And I think uh, like West Delaware really came here on a mission to prove that they're they were due in this final. Now I don't. I have no doubt that Harlan will make a, a pushback here. Let's listen into the huddle. Harlan needs to make some changes. Call for a shoot, all right? Okay, we need to get the ball down, so we gotta swing, all right? Don't give up, play out every point. Ready, here we go. One, two, three, five, five, five. Sounds like more just kind of a mental timeout to kind of catch your breath, get your confidence back. Um, you know, being down 9-0 right off the bat in the state finals, not the way you want to start. Nope. But you know, they've only lost two matches all year. I'm no doubt they're gonna get it together here and uh, make a push back. But uh, you know, West Delaware gives them all the credit for coming out to play hard today. And I tell you what, volleyball truly is a sport of momentum. <laughs> right now, no doubt that West Delaware has the momentum, but a couple plays here or there, and Harlan can easily get that 
Pendulum to swing back to their side. That ball was blocked in the first point of the state championship match. And now we've got the key player up in the front row. Jeff Shaben had just was in the back row. They've got her rotated now to the left front. Let's see if she can uh, get Harlan back into this set. Shaben, we talked about her in our pregame. One of the top players in the state. Last year's MVP of the state tournament. But just as quickly as Harlan gets their first point, West Delaware doesn't let him go on a run. And you'll see that quick outside set. It's really going to make Shaben move all day. I think it was one of the goals of Coach May there is to really use the entire uh, 30 feet of the net to spread the ball out and make Shaben move to block. Emily told the senior libero with the serve and attack air sails out of bounds. And uh, Har Harlan just out of sync right now. That's unusual hitting air for uh, Shaben. The ball a little behind her, really didn't get on top of it, and she sailed it outside wide. Jess Shaben, numbers coming into the tournament, nearly 500 kills and a 494 attack percentage. Yeah. Amazing. That ball pushed to the back row and it grabbed the line. You gotta be that's kidding it. me. You know, and that's your setter over there, Carly Ketchum. She's not afraid to take it over on the second hit. Smart player up there. She's in the front row so she can set her attack and she's gonna be tough to uh, handle there for Harlan. Everything going West Delaware's way here in the first set. There we go. A big time. And that's what I'm talking about. Still there <laughs> by the middle blocker, <laughs> Jess Shaben. Okay, maybe she can. Uh, Get this team back rolling here. That was a beautiful quick set to the middle and a cutback shot to wide open court on West Delaware side. We'll see a replay here. And beautiful, you can see the power. Cut. Yeah, beautiful cutback shot to the open side of the court. And that quick set, the timing is almost everything with between the setter and the middle. Definitely. And look, they've been working together for a while over here on the with Swanson and Shaben. A good service there, or service ace. And the first. Two consecutive points scored by Harlan here in this championship match. A block and another point. And a 3-0 run. They have a mountain to climb to get back into this, but doing everything right. It started are. with a kill, then a service ace, and a block there to give them four points so far. And Shaben, a key factor in all those points, you'll see. Got outside quick on that one, but it kind of takes her out of the offense once she's got a block over there. In system. Setting it to the outside. Again, a lot of options on that front line for West yeah. Delaware. But Harlan, who they're starting to heat up a bit here. You know, she's money. You get that ball to her in rhythm and in tempo, and she's going to put it down. Great, great player. I mentioned she comes with a 488 kills on the year, highest in the state. She gets high, so as high above the net as you can see from our camera that's right on top of the nylon. Oh. So yeah, that's a smart play by the setter. Carly Ketchum, she got a hand on it, pushed it off the uh, the block of Harlan, and it counts a point. Side out for West Delaware. Great play. Again, these two teams have been number one and number two almost all year long. West Delaware in the driver's seat right now in the first set, leading 13 to five against defending state champions oh. Harlan. There's a fist bump and celebration. Out of Jen Shaben, Jess Shaben, she's going to Iowa State next year, and the Cyclones are getting yes, a good one. The Cyclones are getting a good one. They've got a great program. Other Christy Johnson's got a phenomenal program, and they're going to like having her in a, uh, the red and gold next year. And for Jess, I mean, she's yeah. a Cyclone in high school. She'll yep. be a Cyclone <laughs> in college. Go. Doesn't have to change her brand. She's a Cyclone. <laughs> so 13 to six. We played a 25. Win by two. The attack on the outside block, but it hit the Beautiful. line. Nope, the judge well, says out, out of bounds. It's almost a good block there, but uh, just landed outside. Anything on the line is good, but it was just outside the line. Again, Sandy Stewart joining me, Eric Braley. We have Iowa High School Championship Volleyball here on Iowa Public Television all day long. Started at 10 with a 5A. Right now, this is the 4A matchup, <laughs> and we'll slowly work down 3A, 2A, and 1A. And there's a look at yeah. Shaben kind of taking things she, over. Yeah, she pretty much controlled when she was up in that front row. We'll see if West Delaware can uh, put a few more points up when she's in the back row now. Again, you see her, her stats, 488 kills and 60 blocks. Amazing. And she can play all around mm -hmm. with digs in the back row as well. Nice cover on the tip there by Harlan. And there you go. She's even attacking out of the back row. And as a setter, you have to know where Jess Where's Shaben is at. Right. Trying to get her involved on almost every right. single play. So after she's serving, she's rotating to the middle of the court so she can take that attack from the back row. As long as you jump behind the 10-meter line, you're good. 
A real aggressive serve, does sail out of bounds. So the side out that West Delaware was looking for. So Harley made a little bit of ground there, only down by uh, seven now as opposed to nine earlier in the match. So they're, they're trying to claw back in. In system, near side attack, right up in the back row. Beautiful. And it beautiful. results in a beautiful kill. You know, that is amazing defensive transition. This is what they're known for, their quick offense and quick transition from defense to offense. Well, Curly, Curly catch them getting up there to set that ball. Talking with head coach Brett Mather, he says, you know, we're going to try and throw some things that Harlan maybe hasn't seen all season long in some quick tempo. Yeah, definitely a very quick tempo and a very balanced attack. Um, West Delaware, five players with over 100 kills, where Harlan really has leaned on Shaben as their go-to player. Here's Harlan, near side, stuffed at the net, it falls on the line. Oh my gosh. A little bit of a block party. Great block, and again, the coverage was there, but they thought it was gonna go out. If you're in doubt, you gotta play that ball. And a double-digit lead yep. as we're closing in on 25. A service air. As a former coach for the <laughs> Iowa Hawkeyes, you, you hate yeah. giving free points, you, know, you hate ugh. giving a side out, but you gotta like aggressive serving. You're Aggress not just serving lollipops exactly. over the you net know, you there. You take your risk with your reward, and sometimes the uh, the reward's better than the risk, but you're gonna miss some now and then. There's good, good coverage again by the West Delaware team. Harlan attacks the middle, <laughs> and it pays dividends. It's Taylor Frederick, a junior, 237 kills on the season, second best in that category on the season. So when Shaben's in the back row, they rotate up Frederick, uh, another tall player, junior player as you mentioned, and she kind of carries the load when Shaben's in the back row. Kenzie Swanson, you saw her numbers as she's behind the service line, a whistle, and they're gonna redo this. Not sure why. Let's see what happened there. Not sure if there a ball rolled on the floor, or maybe an inadvertent whistle. Jenny Malsum and Mary Walling officials. Look at that perfect pass from Toll. Attack. And it's down. You saw it trying to get her hand <laughs> underneath it. Yep. You can use any part of the body, trying yep. to keep it off the court. Yep. Trying to get a pancake to put that hand down. Hopefully the ball bounces off the back, but she missed that one. Again, West Delaware playing really tough. And looking to add to their lead up by nine. Another tough serve over the net. And it's returned for a kill. Frederick. I think Frederick got to a little shaky start. She's doing better now up there kind of swinging away kind of pulling out, moving the blocker out to a little bit wider position than right in the middle where they can camp out on her. Frederick, that's her second kill of the Ooh. first set. That's the second service ace for Harlan. Shaben has five kills to lead all players. Looks like that's Taylor Wagner back there serving. Leads one of the leaders in serving. Serving aces for uh, Harlan. That mm. one's down. Oh. Kristen Wegman. A little hesitation. I think the ball is going to go deeper. And uh, unusual, you see Harlan let a ball drop like that. They got to play a little bit better defense and uh, keep that ball alive. Averaging two and a half kills per set. And the lead, I'm very impressed. West Delaware has not allowed Harlan to string together yeah. a little run here to get yeah. back into this. Again, Shaben still in the back row. And Setter being nice and aggressive as Ketchum tries to push it over the net. And a kill on the outside for Harlan. That's number 12, Jessica Duval, the junior. Very good. Again, they're trying to mix it up out there, keep the uh, the blockers. And now we've got uh, Shaven back in the front row where they did, she did her damage last time and got some points. <laughs> Another point. That's tough. When you're behind, you almost have to get those serves in. Sure. Kind of giving a point away with those. Again, this is the ninth state trip to the U.S. Cellular Center for West Delaware, third straight. And they return Tough almost state. every single player off last year's state tournament team. They're a year older, a year more mature. Yeah, exactly. And they have been working for this moment. Okay, and there's Christy Wegman. She's our number two kill. Again, one of their top five hitters. They've got five hitters and, and Toll digging it up back here. Uh, amazing show in the first set for, uh, for West Delaware. So here's Emily Toll. Ooh. There's three tolls, actually. And 
Yeah, a couple of different tall sisters on this side, and we've got triplets on the side of Harlan. Oh, there she is. There's Shaven. So Shaven again with her sixth kill, and talking with head coach Brett Mather, he says, you know, she's going to get her six, seven yeah. kills, but we're going to need to find a way to get some other points and make sure other players for Harlan aren't getting right. five, six kills. So far, they've served tough, which has kept them out of their offense. It's been hard to get the ball to save them. Another quick this. set. You know, this fast offense is kind of taking uh, West Harlan out of the game right now. Well, look here on we the go, replay quick. here, and we're and slowing not, this down for you. Yeah, and there's no block up there. I mean, that, that block is not ready for that quick attack. Credit to West Delaware for really running a nice, quick offense. The defense is just, they don't have time to set up. See another nice jump serve. A lot of players now, most players are jump serving. We're seeing some aggressiveness out of yeah. Ketchum, the setter as well. She's yeah. not always setting. Sometimes she's exactly. calling her own number. Yeah, but I like that little setter for West Delaware. She's up in the front row now, so she can set or attack, and she takes advantage of that. But you'll see the point with Kemp Shaven again. So the door is open for opportunity for Harlan. West Delaware is closing in on taking this first set. Phenomenal set. You know, even with a little bit of an off pass off the net, Ketchum gets that ball up there quick and uh, impressive uh, fast attack from wherever she's at on the floor. Bridget Hoffman making her head coach happy here. 24-15, West Delaware. For the set. This is against last year's state champion Harlan. <laughs> They're not gonna go quietly here as Jess Shaven gets her seventh kill. Think of it. Now she's in the back row. We'll see if uh, Taylor Frederick can kind of pick up that uh, offense in the front row. One thing you'll notice, servers can uh, serve from anywhere in the back line. So she starts out in the middle so she can play offense back there in the back row. Harlan has it on the slide down the line, out of bounds, and the first set goes to West Delaware. A double-digit win. Impressive, impressive win for West nope, Delaware. 25-16. 25-16. Well, right out of the gates, <laughs> West Delaware just kind of punched Harlan yeah. in the mouth and said, hey, we're here ready to play. I think the fast offense, the balanced attack really got them going, and, it, and Harlan off to a slow start, couldn't quite get their bearings, especially with uh, Shaven in the back row. It took them a while to even get her to the front rotation. So we'll see if uh, Coach Spangenberg changes that here in uh, the set two, and, and hopefully they'll get back here and uh, give West Delaware a game in set two. Well, we talked with Carly Ketchum after the semifinal victory yesterday. She is the setter for West Delaware, the team that's up one to zero over Harlan. This year's state tournament was just these past couple of years. We came down here, we haven't gone past the first round, and getting past the first round and the semifinals and being in the finals just feels amazing. We all played together, we all played with heart. We just played like a team, and that's how we always play. Carly Ketchum has played well all season long. She had 51 assists yesterday, and she's doing pretty good now. Pretty amazing. She actually leads the state tournament stats right now with 77 assists for the tournament, averaging about a 9.63 per, uh, per set, only outdone by Katie Swanson, the Harlan setter. So, you know, she's had a great, uh, great tournament as well. But uh, Carly really feels like her team's on a mission, a team of destiny, and they're here to win. And here we spoke with Jess Shaven after yesterday's semifinal victory. Um, last year we had a very successful season. Um, the tournament we were kind of flying by the seat of our pants. We hadn't really been to the championship or even won a state game before. So we were just going with the flow and doing what we could, doing what we could in the moment. But this year we know how it feels and we know what it takes and we know what level we have to play at. And we're just, we're ready and we're focused and it's going to be a great game tomorrow. That was number eight, Kenzie Swanson, the setter for Harlan, and she's had an outstanding year as well. Harlan's down, but hey, they're not out of they're this thing out. one you bit. Know, you know, they've, they've been pu uh, pushed a little bit uh, here today. We'll see if they have, uh, I guess, the stamina to come back. They, uh, they've been here before. They know how to win. Um, and, you know, with Shaven in there, I wouldn't count any team out with, with Shaven on the floor. I'm sure that they'll get their offense going, and uh, she'll carry him back here to a stronger showing in set two. Well, there were many highlights in the first set. Here are some of them. Again, the 4A championship, West Delaware. They came ready to play. Kills, blocks, service aces. Took a little while, but then Harlan 
had some big plays of their own, and that's why we're expecting them to come out strong in the second set. I right, see some of their Shaven with that cutback. She's got a big arm swing. But, you know, give credit to West Delaware. They ran a lot of quick offense to the right side of the court, made Shaven maybe move a little more, uh, different direction than she used to. Um, a little hesitation on some defensive plays by Harlan. But uh, I think the Aunt Coach Andy will get him back in, that going here in set two. Well, Sandy, what do you feel like the keys to the match are for this 4A showdown? You know, I think for West Delaware, we've already seen it. You know, just a big outside hitting attack. They're they're hitting from both the right and left side of the court, really mixing things up, moving it around, and also their consistency and composure. You know, we saw yesterday they had a bit. They won the first two sets of Marion. They had a big lead, and they ended up losing that third set, going five games. So, uh, keeping their consistency and their composure. And for Harlan, you know, I think again a big game from Shaben. She's going to carry this team. She's going to have to really uh, carry the load up there. Uh, maybe. Uh, set her more in the back and we're seeing now she's actually starting in the left front position so they're getting her in the front row quicker and aggressive serving you know West Delaware is running this offense and even with the bad pass they're still running a very fast attack so I think a little bit more aggressive serving to uh, maybe slow down the offense for West Delaware good coaches make adjustments we're already yeah. seeing some adjustments made by Harlan here to try and get them back on track right. But it will be West Delaware to serve. Again, they flip benches, flip sides of the net. West Delaware's on the right of your TV screen. Harlan's wearing the red and black on the left side. West Delaware, hey, that's exactly how they started the first set. Again, they're going quick to the middle. And that, you know, Shaben was up there, but a little bit late. So they're, they're still using that quick middle attack to uh, keep Harlan off balance. Again, Sandy, we talked about with that quick offense, Shaben's gonna be pretty tired throughout today because she's going to have to cover that entire 30 feet in front of the net there. Exactly. You see right there, she jumped in the middle, the set went outside, so she wasn't able to get there. And, uh... An attack air by Harlan, and it's a quick 2-0 lead for West Delaware here. There's uh, Shaven trying to get her team to settle down, get the ball passed up here. You see the blocker switching on the uh, West Delaware side of the team to kind of maximize their strength over there. Good up in the back row. And it results yeah. in points. Quick transition to get the dig. It's spot on right to Amazing. the setter. Setter doesn't yeah. have to move yeah. because the pass is right on the money. And even with a little bit of a, she had to get down on her knees to set that. Carly Ketchum right now is my player of the game. She is getting the ball to the person that's gonna put it down for West Delaware. <laughs> There's the well, first point, I mean, I and it comes with soon. power. <laughs> Jess Shaben, she is fun to watch, and you can tell might have took out a little frustration on yeah, that last. I mean, she's got some power behind the ball. We're talking, she's swinging hard and put that ball, ball down on the floor, so very quick attack. Heavy hitter, heavy hitter. The 2013 Class 4A Player of the Year, Jess Shaben, averaging 5.14 kills per set while hitting nearly 500. <laughs> But West Delaware has multiple weapons. And they're losing track of Carly Ketchum up there. She's their setter, and she's going to take that ball over. And again, you know, just can't fire defense. Stand there and watch. It's like they've got to move more aggressively and pick up that ball. Now, West Delaware, they have dealt with some adversity, to say the least, this year with a multitude of injuries. Brooks is Addison Brooks, number three. Has missed a couple weeks of practices, but she's still playing. Yeah, After the semifinal victory, they threw ice an ice pack on her immediately. Yeah, tough, tough kid. She's a four-sport. A lot of these kids are multi-sport athletes for uh, West Delaware. Again, tough serve. So it's right an overpass, and that'll work well for the offense of West Delaware. Love the heart and effort that we're seeing on both sides of the net. Six to one. And West Delaware again, they won that first set pretty easily. You know, we got Toll in the back row. She's their uh, libero doing a phenomenal job covering the court for West Delaware. And then again, covering that tip so nice. <laughs> Unbelievable. And another point for the Hawks from West Delaware. You know, they are just tearing up the middle of the court with that quick offense. Carly Ketchum is just putting the, the ball right on the money for those hitters. And she's only a junior. <laughs> that time into the net. 
She says, my bad, but she has been serving tough. Now it's time for Harlan. Asia Claver, a senior, the libero. And Claver, one of uh, triplets. She's got a sister on the team and a brother. So uh, tripler, the Claver triplets are out in force today. West Delaware coach talking to the down official. Trying to get a clarification on a call or a ruling. I'm not sure what that was about. So uh, maybe a little psychological, uh, just sure. making sure that the uh, officials are paying attention out there. We know they are, they're doing a great job. They really are, and that's a, a good point. The officials that you're seeing all day today, nice block there. Mm -hmm. they've, they've worked hard all season long, and they get voted, rated by the coaches. And it's not only the best coaches and student athletes, it's the, the best, best officials. officials the and they've done a great job calling all the matches today. So that was number six, Bridget Hoffman, another junior for West Delaware, on a slide attack, and she hits right through the block. And again, they're following the, the strategy of Coach Mather. They're moving that ball around all across the uh, left, middle, and right side of the court. Well, Sandy, why is that slide play so effective in the sport of volleyball? Well, you know, it's a little hard to block. You can't really see where the arm's coming through. And uh, if she's going to go line or cross court, the, the, the attacker has a little bit more leverage on the one foot adjust, kind of like a basketball layup. Yeah. You can get a little higher. Um, it's kind of a nice uh, play that uh, gives you a lot of options as an offensive player, difficult to, uh, to block. They're calling an illegal hit on the setter. I think that's the first. Uh, Illegal hit, and she tried to make a good set out of mm -hmm. a bad pass, and that'll happen. And that top official, they're watching. <laughs> the, the balls are multicolored, so you can kind of see rotation on if it's a clean set or yeah. not. That's a tough set from sideline to sideline. Yeah, and that's really critical to when you're far, that far back on the right side of the court. She really pushed it out to the antenna to spread that court out, to spread the blockers out. So very impressed with uh, Carly Ketchum's performance so far today. Ketchum getting some kills along with mm -hmm. the sets. Bridget Hoffman, six kills. A nice, tough, deep serve. They're having a hard time handling it. Another service ace. You know, and they're serving uh, Shaven to make her work a little bit more in the back row. I think that was part of the strategy, trying to take her, make her work more front row and back row. Well, we are watching that Class 3A semifinal. Again, 3A is after this match, and Solon defeated Nevada, and serving really carried them. It was. Incredible to see the different types of serves yeah. that they were throwing at yeah. Nevada yesterday. You've got some drop serves. There's Shaven out of the back row. You've got some top spin serves, just hard float serves, and a lot of it depends on your serving target. This is quite a rally here. Again, 10 to 4, <laughs> but Harlan wins that point. You, you look in for certain plays that can be turning points in a set or in an overall match. And you could just see the celebration after that one. A yeah. long rally and unfortunately unable to capitalize yeah, for Harlan. That's the key thing. You know, you make a great play. You've got to keep that momentum going. And a, a serving error is not what the coach wanted at that point. So, But it looked uh, Frederick had a great block up there. She leads the team in blocks, number 15 for, uh, for Harlan. They're serving to Shaven. Yeah, nice attack. It was in bounds. Caught that far sideline. And Frederick's coming to play up there. She's had a key block and now a key attack. Fired up in there to uh, here we see maybe the replay again. It's a nice cut shot right inside the block. Um, so Sandy, when they're being set, always options. You can go across the front of the net, diagonally. Yep. You can take it down the line. At what point does the hitter make that decision? You know, because they're in the air, and you got to exactly. make a split-second decision. You know, decision. it's uh, hitters that have kind of an instinct to see where the block is. If it's a tight set, they'll try and maybe push it off the block. If it's an inside set, they'll go try to go inside the block. Uh, really, a smart hitter can use a lot of different shot options, uh, depending on where the defense is or where their teammate tells them to hit it. You know, a good team is talking to that sure. team, saying, tip it left, tip it right. There's an opening deep left. So a lot of communication where that hitter can take the ball. Good hang by Harlan, but the attack sails deep and out of bounds. So the hitters are always looking to see what's the defense going to give exactly. me because the defense can't cover every square inch of the court. Exactly. And so it's a, you know, if you've got a perfect set, then you just swing away and hope you can <laughs> blast it through the block like that one there. Swung away there. <laughs> you can see wearing a little bit of emotion, Junior Taylor Frederick. She's having a nice match. Yep. There she is again, just the block there, but she's just swinging hard and blasting it through the block. 
Blocker's got to be a little bit stronger up there. She has a chance to serve to help her team. They're down 12 to 8 in the uh, second set. It was West Delaware who won the first set 25 16. Now you're seeing a little bit better blocking up there now. They're kind of getting used to. Uh, they block the middle pack, and then it goes, there goes the back set to the right side of the court, and the block not able to get there. And West Deller, again, really doing a nice job mixing up their offense. Well, look at there it is. this view. How'd she get it through? You got four hands yeah. there. And uh, again, Shaben having to move left and right and uh, making her work out there to get to that block. 13 to 8, West Delaware. They've been to this state tournament three straight years. This is their ninth total appearance. And again, kind of coming down here at, uh, as a team of destiny, but hardly, you know, we're defending state champion. Got a lot to, to play for here. And you see Shaben up there, and there she goes. She's going to be the key to the game to getting him back going again. Quick set. And a lot of times when teams are down, you try and ride your best player and have them carry you to exactly. a victory. And you know, and this is not a new arena, a stage for them, they're no. defending chase, but also uh, a lot of their players were on the state championship basketball team last year. So no uh, stranger to competition at this level. And Sandy, you coached at the high school level and powerful, powerful <laughs> kill there. Shaving heavy ball, she swings and uh, wouldn't want to be behind that one. <laughs> but what do you love about these multi-sport athletes that, okay, they won a yeah. state basketball championship, a state volleyball. Why does that make them better overall student athletes? You know, I think just uh, having exposure and competing with any kind of pressure on you and just the the idea of the Iowa girl. I love the Iowa girls mm. high school athletic union. They provide so many opportunities for young girls. If you have daughters, granddaughters, get them into sports. It's one of the best things you can do for them. I know talking with you before the broadcast, just the evolution of the Iowa girl and the high school girls athletic union and wow. Shaben. Shaben just um, she's on fire she's carrying yes. them back swinging Shaben she is yeah <laughs> now we're just four points down and again she's going to have to have that big game for them to get back into it great effort by Swanson there and you can see the energy they want this bad Let's see if West Delaware can uh, withhold this uh, push from Harlan well he had to expect Harlan to make a run mm -hmm. and they're in the midst of it right mm -hmm. now. Using another free ball. Let's see what they do with it here. The free ball is just a bump over the net. They're going to Shaben in the back, on the back set on the slide. Finding her in multiple ways. That time the slide, sometimes the quick yeah. set. And all the result of just a, a free ball that came over the net, they were able to run a little bit better offense on the Harlan side of the net. Well, another point. This for Harlan. Seeing a timeout here pretty soon, I would imagine, from uh, West Delaware. There it yeah. is. Shaben has a dozen kills. And uh, Claver did an awesome job serving that round. Um, again, one of. Let's listen in to the Harlan bench and see what they're talking about. Okay, she's a dark hair girl. Right sides are trying to come that way. Get water, out hustle. Okay, watch the setter. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to just. Okay, so be ready for that. All right. Watch, tell them to watch for the tip because they've been blocking me. They'll probably watch for a little off speed shots from the hitters and go into shaving them uh, more regularly. And again, just what I call campfire defense. You kind of camp around the ball and it drops on the floor. Yep. It's like you've got to go, someone's got to go get that ball. They've had a couple just drop right between two or three players. and. Uh, I think that's enough of campfire defense. Can't be roasting <laughs> s'mores when the state title's on the line. 14-13, you heard the game plan. Set it to number 10, Jess Shaben. She has 12 kills. The next highest player has two for Harlan. There's another one. She pops it right over the net. And nothing has brought them in this match that I talked earlier. The key to the game was aggressive serving. So they're having a hard time passing flavor serve, and they've not been able to get the ball to their for their hitters, so it's been a little rough go on the offensive side for West Delaware. Harlan has not led at all today. Oh, another tough pass, another free ball. Oh, they're calling They out. have their lead now. She steps out. Let's see what that was over there, maybe a... 
So rallying Someone's all the way it. back. I think they're getting a clarification. Now only the captain can go talk to the official. Mm -hmm. And the coach is wondering what the call was. We I think didn't they quite called out it. of bounds, and usually you can. Oh, okay. But I could be wrong. I think you can keep one foot on the playing floor and one foot on the outside of the playing floor. And you can't really see from this angle on screen, but there is a, a cutoff where the media is over on the far side of the court. And, and that's you, for safety. And that's, if you go out of bounds over there, that's uh, out of play and a violation. So number one for Harlan. Again, trouble passing that ball. Ketchum's been doing some work running that down. Reaches oh. high into the air. How'd she get that <laughs> one over there? The Even, set, the timing was not perfect, but she still gets the point. Even when it's not perfect, it's perfect. It works for her. Just a great athlete to adjust to a little high set and uh, get the ball over. I mean, that is athleticism. Go, go, gadget arms, reaches up, tips it over, and great vision. Finding yeah. the hole in West Delaware's defense. And there's that quick attack. Once they pass, they're back in it. So that was what, about a six, seven point run for Harlan. So uh, again, just because of some strong serving, it really took West Delaware out of their offense. Six unanswered points Six. for the Cyclones from Harlan. They're right back into this thing. If they win set two. We're playing for two out of three. Exactly. Love this game. You never know who's gonna win till the, <laughs> you know who sings. <laughs> A tip, last touch by West Delaware. Harlan with the quick side out. They're not gonna let West Delaware go on a run here. And again, who was it? Shaven. High off the block, block didn't get there quick enough, and it rolled off the top of the blocker's hands for a point. Flat-footed serve over the net. Returned, okay. tracking it down near the bench. Free ball, and let's see what they do. So you can see in system, set to the outside. Set was a little low. And Harlan celebrating. Oh, they're feeling it. You bet. And that Frederick again, she's coming to play when Shave is in the back row. She's been playing some key minutes up there. It's a quick attack right inside the block. Five kills for Frederick. She fired up. 15 Perfect for pass. Shaven. Like Two contacts was the call. I think to, like, on the quick pass, uh, Ketchum drifted into the net, had a net violation, unfortunately, and uh, Harlan has his biggest lead. Second and final timeout called by West Delaware. We're heading down the home stretch here. Let's see what West Delaware is talking strategy to close out strong here. Hey, come on, ladies. We gotta relax here. We gotta relax here. Well, that's on us. We're doing, they have not changed anything they've done. We have. We've started worrying too much instead of playing and enjoying the game. We're tense, we're tight. Relax, move the feet. We can't play defense with our feet in one spot. We've got to cover court, plain and simple. So our feet have got to move. Yeah, Jade, your hands are right up here. Too worried to get hit in the head. Don't worry about it. Get it hit in the head, it'll hurt. Okay, but you move on, okay? Tough defense. Our block is late on that. They've, they have brought that middle tempo down. They have brought that down a little bit. Here, you gotta go out there, here we go. Easier said than done, yeah. coach. You know, I think what we talked about keys to the game is consistency and composure. And sure. when they're on, they're on, but they get off a couple games and they lose that momentum, they lose the confidence. And like you said, you've got to relax, have fun, and, uh, and keep your feet moving. And not be scared to get hit in the head. Yeah, you know, uh, again, better said, easier said than done. <laughs> but yeah, Shaman's up there, I'm putting my hands up. She's bringing the power, that's Beautiful for pass. sure. And look at that, that's out it. of the timeout, everything. Yep. The pass, the set, the execution. And again, they're serving toll, and she's just putting the, button, the pass on the money to catch them. Beautiful slide, back attack. I like both coaches here today, again, with listening in. As all day long, you'll be able to hear as we have the coaches mic'd up. Miscommunication there. You know, you'll see Coach Mather showing uh, the serving location. They're, ser they're serving Shaven. They're making their work in the back row. And so you, you can see, see the clipboard there. He's, he's saying what zone right. he wants her to serve so to. They're serving zone one right now, which is the right back part of the court. There's Shaven had a good pass, but they're making her work. Just inside the antenna, a little tip over the net. Here's Harlan. Toll with another great day out of the back row. It is so Eight. tough to do. And slam the back down for another point for the Cyclones. That's Taylor Frederick. Yeah, leading the, their team in blocks up there. A uh, very aggressive blocker and no coverage for West Delaware. So Harlan with their largest lead here, up by three, closing in on 25. And the great up by Shaven back there playing some defense. 
Mistiming on the quick set to the middle. Now they'll work it to the outside. That was a libero bump set. That's all she can do up there. The player of the other colored uniform is our defensive specialist libero. We've seen some long rallies yeah, here in this Class 4A championship match today. And there expect many more long rallies. And they're moving the ball around, left side, right side, middle. Great recovery there. Not an aggressive swing, they're though. They're going to over the net. Can't Good. reach over. Good call. Good call. So they're, they've got to let the setter set the ball when the ball's on her side of the net. And uh, Frederick a little too aggressive and got over on the other side of the net. Interfered with the setter. Uh, good call over the net. You'll see it here. So, love, love this camera angle so yeah, you can perfect. see exactly what yeah. the official was seeing. Yeah, you can't interfere with that setter setting the ball when it's on that side of the net. So now Harlan's going to take a timeout. Let's listen in to the Harlan huddle. Here, all right, cover the middle and have an offense up here, okay? Back row, Ace. Hey, uh, you're gonna have to keep sliding back on that right side attack. You're up here, they're gonna hit deep. So slide back, don't worry about the tip, okay? All right, are we ready? Yeah. Coach, is anything? Good, stay aggressive, earn this point. Ready, here we go, one, two, three, side close. Good job up there. Have to stay aggressive. Right. Because if you let West Delaware come back and win this and you're down 0-2, <laughs> yeah. that's going to be tough to come exactly. back from. Got your backs against the wall there. But uh, and right now we've got uh, Shaven in the back row, and I think they're probably going to be keeping to serve her. We'll see if they can uh, get a pass and keep the momentum going. Uh, West Delaware, the champions. Again, they're serving Shaven, making the, their work. Champions out of the wall, Mac. Cyclones. That's kind of a tough angle to hit from, so they had to just pass it over. Cyclones with the point. It seems like most times after a timeout's called, the coach <laughs> that calls the timeout gets rewarded with the point. Exactly. So that was 13, I believe, uh, Taylor Wagner with that kill. She's uh, a senior, one of the graduating uh, players for Harlem. And now trying to help the team behind the service tough line. serve. That was a great save by the setter there. Working it to the outside. The Ooh. block was there. Great the block. block was there. Taylor Frederick, I mean, she's making a statement up there at the net. A little bit higher set. She's got time to get there. And no coverage deep in the court. You'll see it here. Yes. Beautiful block. It kind of redirects that ball back into the middle of the court. The block. Beautiful. Uh, again, has shifted to the center. <laughs> Harlan has it. Let's see what they do here with the free ball. Trying to go up 23-18 in the second. Trying to even out the series. Attack oh. air. Point Harlan. You know, they tried to run a, a kind of a double quick there with uh, the back set going to the back player. She had a wide open court and just a little too strong. Here's Taylor Wagner, the senior, serving it up for the Cyclones. Well, that works. Oh, 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 that. She didn't take the, her approach, but she knew exactly to go to that golden had a, far corner. Had a good wrist snap, good top spin. It looked like it was going to go out. And with that top spin, that ball just dropped right on the line. We're looking at a, an even match here. Five unanswered points by Harlan. They had a 6-0 run early on in this second set, trying to get a 6-0 <laughs> run again to take the second set. Kind of mixing it up there with a hard hits and tips. Out of bounds, two 6-0 runs, and Harlan takes set number two. We're dead even <laughs> at one apiece. All right, we, all, we got uh, two out of three now, so one apiece and see who shows up in game three. This one could go five. <laughs> this one could, a lot on the line for the 4A championship match. Now, Iowa Public Television brings you highlights from last weekend's 2014 high school Girls Swimming and Diving Championships. My very good friend, Paul Yeager, has more. Back in Marshalltown at the YMCA, it's time for the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Swimming and Diving Championships. The 200 freestyle features returning champ Alyssa Fluitt of Southeast Polk. She's in lane four. The junior was the favorite entering the race. And she proved why very quickly. As Fluitt makes the turn, she can sense this is big. How big? It's a record at 147.14. Meet record, state record. What's that like? <laughs> it's probably the best feeling in the world to say I can come out again 
drop time and get another record. Alyssa was not done. She had one more race, and this is the longest event of the day, the 500 freestyle. Teammates get into the action here, and eh, there might be a couple of hazards of the job, but Fluid would dominate another race. Two laps to go here. You can see she is way out in front, breezes to another state meet best, and Iowa best with a time of 4.50.27. But she wasn't the only one with a double win day. Maddie Gerke of Waukee, who won the event as a sophomore, second last year, and looking to claim gold. This is the 50 freestyle, the fastest race of the day. And it was fast for the senior, who writes her name in the state record books with a time of 22.51. The Missouri recruit blazes another fast pace here in the 100 backstroke. Great jump, great start. Gerke also swam a leg on the first place 200 medley team for the Warriors this day. Gerke would break the four-year-old record by more than a second to win. Maddie, a three-win state meet. Not too bad. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it, definitely. Any idea how you got to this point? Um, hard work. Um, I trained a lot this, this winter and this summer, um, and I, I wanted it. Thank you, Paul, for that recap from the swimming and diving championships last week. And let's now visit with the Harlan head coach. And it's been a fun first set so far. Second set was fun as well. But what did you see different between the first and the second set, coach? Well, I thought we were uh, covering better in the back row, but we adjusted more to their offense. Um, you know, they, have, they run quick tempo, so we just did our best to stay with them at the net. And then I thought our back row kids made good adjustments. Key to this third set. What key do you have for for this third one? How about we just outscore them? Would that be good enough? <laughs> Thank good. you so right. much. Best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you for joining mm -hmm. us. So, yeah, it, a tale of two different sets. Yeah, I think what happened in that second set, you saw the adjustment. They started shaving in the front row, so they didn't quite have that uh, that uh, defense that she, you know, that she was up there to play right off the bat instead of having to play defense for three rotations. And I think that made a difference and got them off to a better start in set two. I said. Good coaches make adjustments, yeah. and Harlan definitely did that, and it results in a victory, and we're all tied up yeah. here. Now a two out of three. We'll see who, uh, who shows up now. I think we talked, too, about uh, you know West Delaware having some consistency and composure. They started so high and so mm -hmm. strong, and now that you know a little bit of a turn of, uh, of momentum, let's we'll see if they can come back and regain some of that here in game three. Of course, Harlan doesn't want that. They're going to come out and, and try and keep their land going. They do have Shaben starting at left front. And they do have the Hawaiian luau they student do. section. You know, it's so fun to watch <laughs> these schools come with their different themes that they come all dressed up at. If you uh, Especially around beautiful. Halloween, I they break it. out some different. And Very this is fun. school spirit at its finest. You know, and Harlan's not that close. They had a three and a half hour drive to get here. They're uh, just down I-80, uh, western side of the state, maybe an hour and a half uh, west of Des Moines, so they had a nice trip over, three and a half hours, they brought a great contingent. And West, or Manchester, West Delaware, about an hour north of Cedar Rapids, so they've got a great uh, group of folks supporting them here as well, so. And interesting, as West Delaware, they won the semifinal yesterday, they went home, decided to sleep in their own good beds. Thing. Very good. They had practice this morning. Got to the gym, talked through some strategy in their own that's gym. That's and nice. uh, so that's an advantage of yeah. not being three so and a half hours yeah, away. Exactly. Well, that's not what uh, Coach Fangerberg wanted to start the match with, a, kind of a weak serve. So uh, kind of a break for uh, West Delaware to get, the, get off to the first uh, point in this third set. Well, West Delaware has scored the first point in all three sets. And uh, I told you, it's a game <laughs> of runs, a game of momentum. And right now, West Delaware trying to get that momentum back. It's Jade Putz back there, our defensive specialist. And again, coaching, you've got your best server starting right off the bat, so she can get in there and get some tough serves, get some momentum going. Good time block at the net. West Delaware trying to figure out a way to hit it through the block. A ball handling air, two yeah. contacts, and it's a 3-0 lead. That's kind of a break for uh, West Delaware. They had a little bit of, of a, a bad set there. It went over and a little mishandle. 
It's got to come out of the setter's hand nice and even. If it's a double hit to carry, the official's going to catch that. Another high reaching attack results in a kill and 16 kills on the day so far. Now Swanson to, to Shaben and a little bit out of timing, but she's still got the strength and the reach to put that ball down. Senior Kenzie Swanson leads the 4A field with 930 assists <laughs> heading into the tournament. You know, that would be so fun to be able to set a player like uh, Shaven. Looks like she uh, cut it a little too wide that time, tried to bring it back across her body and just a little too, uh, too much on the follow through. It's the fourth straight trip to state for Harlan, third straight for West Delaware. Number one, number two, almost all year long. Emily told a four sport athlete there, libero, and a great block in the front row. That's not easy to block. It's it's yeah. a, it's one thing to be in position, but then to execute and right reach there. up and Who make sure those at? hands are together there. Who was that Bridget Hoffman, I think, up there, along with uh, Wegman up there blocking. That one will fall in bounds. 17 kills now. That was a nice deep court shot, a little bit different tempo, timing for uh, Shaben. Let's put it deep in the court when they weren't. Addison Brooks, Kristen Wegman doing a nice job for West Delaware. Got a nice pass, tried to take it over on that second hit, and, and uh, Harlan was there. Quick set, uh -oh. a push, they and sometimes it. it's placement more than power, Definitely. and you can see Shaben's mixing it up here today. That, that time she went with the power. They keep going back to her. She's going to be the one to, to bring him to a victory today. Wow, another, this game is a little bit different. You got competitive game, first five, six points of the match, of the uh, set. Well, Harlan has made quick work of everyone they've faced so far in Cedar Rapids. They defeated Lewis Central in the quarterfinals on Tuesday, three to zero. Mm -hmm. They defeated Clear Creek Amana, three to zero mm -hmm. in the semifinals, but they dropped that first set, 25-16 but rallied back to win the second, 25-18. And again, West Yeller is a very formidable opponent. I think they're pushing Harlan. Uh, first set they've lost, uh, you mentioned, in the tournament. And we've got a, a match that shows the, the competitiveness of both teams. Oh, yeah, you can't sweep your way through the entire <laughs> field to get to a state title. That would be incredibly yeah. uh, tough to do. Yeah, yeah, unless you're an extremely dominant team in the there's Shaven again with a great cutback shot. She's bringing it and now back in the back row and uh, Frederick back in the front row and she's held her own up there as well for Harlan. Great set. They're a little bit more in rhythm there from Swanson and uh, perfect set for Shaven to put it down. Six to five our score. There you see 19 kills. She's just got a really good top spin serve. So how many different types of serves <laughs> are there? You know, probably uh, three or four basic ones. Uh, you don't see money in a roundhouse. It's an old style volleyball serve, a roundhouse serve. We used to teach that in Iowa. Some players use that. Uh, you know, you've got a jump top spin, you've got a standing top spin, which is what she's doing is a standing top spin. And I think sometimes even the floater is probably the hardest one because you get in a big arena mm -hmm. and that ball's just floating. You don't know where it's going, but uh, and it kind of depends on the situation and where you're serving. And if you're serving short front, you're going to use more of a floater, maybe top spin. Uh, if you've got a great speed, you know, hard serve, you're just going to serve hard and try and pick the open spot there, so. Let's okay. see what serve we have here. Who are they going to? Shaven. And they, yeah, and where you serve yeah. is tough as well. Yeah, they're serving, but that was a little too weak serve. You've got to serve a little tougher. They're picking on Shaven back there, and she had a perfect pass back there. Let's see Frederick up there, focused, ready to block. Officials timeout, tied at seven here. Again, Sandy Stewart. Iowa volleyball coach, the Iowa Hawkeyes from 82 to 88. Joining me, Eric Braley. Here's that last play from that amazing view. Beautiful. How do we get a camera up great? there? I love that. Love the production quality here for Iowa Public yeah. Television. So the players are sweating. They go to the floor. The floor gets wet, so we got to make sure that's cleaned up so we don't have any injuries. They get out there and uh, wipe the wipe the floor down, so we got a nice, clean, dry floor to play on. I like the pink on the court too. Isn't it beautiful. Iowa Girls High School colors, they got it branded, it looks fantastic.
Looks great on the court, looks great. The volleyball, if you can see, there's pink on that. They do a nice job of subbing their front and back row to mm -hmm. West Delaware. They get a lot of players in the game. They can stay fresh, uh, put your more defensive specialists in the back row, and <laughs> tough serving. It's so hard. You're guarding that back <laughs> row. Should I go? I don't know. They decide to step away, and it grabs that far service and line for the point. that's what that float will do. She's hitting kind of a float ball, and it could float down. It could float out, and that time it came down. West Delaware, 45 and two on the year, taking on defending champion Harlan, who's 40 and two on the season. Kill on the outside. Beautiful back set by the setter over there, Swanson, and it was tough for the block to adjust. You'll see it here. So they thought it was gonna go front and they block did not even get there. So again, great decision by the setter Swanson to put that uh, behind her for the, the hit on the right side of the court. Leadership on both <laughs> these teams is incredible. And you see the success for West Delaware going to that quick attack. That's been uh, probably their go-to and uh, most effective play all day is that quick set to the middle. So first to double digits here in set three is West Delaware. They're up 10 to eight. Harlan with the kill on the outside. And again, that right side of the court, I think they're picking on the short left blocker over there. Uh, We'll see that again here. So again, nice back set, and the block was there, but just not quite strong enough. Nice effort in the back row by defense, but uh, great job by Harlan to kind of mix up their offense. Nine kills for, for Frederick. Harlan Frederick. She's about nine away yes. from. That's unusual. You don't uh, see that, but great decision by the setter. Take it over on the second ball. You're not expecting that as a defense, and they've got to be aware of that. So. Smart, smart heads up play by Swanson there. Element of surprise. Mm -hmm. Having to go down to the court to keep the ball alive. In system, here's Harlan. Let it go, smart decision. And Good. the point and side out for West Delaware. Set so was a little quick out there. Hitter tried to get in quick and uh, blast away on the block, but uh, wasn't able to catch the blocker's hand to get a touch on that. Number two, Jade Putts checks in. Remember, she was the player that was serving tough in that first set when they were able to open up that big lead. So we've gone through a rotation, so we're back to where we started the match. This might be the third rotation through, actually, but that was tough. Uh, she didn't get a serve too long because Shaven didn't. <laughs> <laughs> didn't let her. Didn't let her. Again, West Delaware began the year 31 straight victories. Mm -hmm. Only two losses came late in the season. Both to 5A teams, Cedar Rapids, Kennedy, and Iowa City West. Right. So they've, they've played very well all year. And, uh, but again, Harlan's a tough, tough team, big hitter in the middle, and she's uh, giving them all they can handle right now. Head coach, Angie Spangenberg, again, 22 years as a head coach, 566 wins, 140 of them coming at Harlan in the last four years. Harlan again using that block, going to the middle of the court. And West Delaware, a little bit smaller team, West Delaware, that's why they use their speed, but uh, Harlan's taking it to him right now. Got a uh, two point lead. 21 kills for Shaben. Beautiful pass. Here's the set to the outside. And again, that's so hard that's for it. Harlan's defense yeah. because when you can set 25 to 30 yeah. feet, yeah, look at that. And again, she's pushed that ball way outside. That blocker didn't really have a chance to get there, but started with a perfect pass by Toll. You kind of forget about the lowly defensive player, but they make everything happen in the back row. The libero serves it up. Well, Delaware gets it back. And now the overpass. Another free ball. Let's see where they're going. Down to the, the court with the kill for number 22 kills for Shaven. Again, they're moving her around, though, so she doesn't quite have to always hit in the middle. She gets a little bit better angle sometimes on the right side of the court with that slide. But, uh, yeah, very impressive. Hard to stop that kind of a player. The Iowa State Cyclones are getting a good one. They are. I, f I work with a colleague who's an Iowa State fan, mm -hmm. unfortunately. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I coached at Iowa, but Iowa State's a great program. <laughs> Here's the quick set. Look at that, perfect. Nice up in the back yep. row by Putts. 
Yeah, a lot of times all that attention goes to the <laughs> players getting the big kills, but when you can get those nice tight sets or those amazing ups in the back exactly. row, yeah, and look at this we've rally. Got a, we've got a rally. It's like who's gonna who's gonna blink first? And they're dig, great dig in the back row by the libero. <laughs> And you can see from the reaction by Harlan, when you work that hard, yeah, it tastes so sweet to get the point. Watch this. So Claver in the back row, again, one of our triplets in the back row, Claver, but brought it up, and then the back row again. Now we see West Delaware with some campfire defense, kind of standing around. It's like, we've got to be more aggressive and go for that ball. Locked on the outside. I think if they would have let it go, it would have fallen out of bounds, mm -hmm. but the play moves forward. On the slide, the attack yep. in the net anyway was Harlan, but so important, we're at, we're at a real critical, critical stage yeah. of this 4A championship. Yeah. Taking this game three or set three, you're gonna have a big advantage going in. You two, only one more to win the match. And both player, both teams using the uh, slide and the right side attack very effectively. Again, a little bit out of rhythm there. Yeah, had to wait. And Having to scramble. A lot of scrambling. West Delaware. Again, trails by two. Harlan has looked like a completely different team in set two and set three. Yes. They knew they needed to make some changes if they wanted to defend their state title. Yeah, a little sloppy on both sides. And I think uh, good smart play just to kind of drop it over where they weren't on a short little uh, return over on the left side of the court there. You can see the coaching going on. Mm -hmm throughout the match. Now let's see, Shabin's in the back row. We'll see if uh, West Delaware can uh, get some momentum back here. Wow, really cut that ball perfectly. So even with that, you'll see more net violations now because of that slide. The, the blockers are a little bit out of tempo with that slide attack, trying to get their hands up there, so. Again, if you're just joining us, this is the Iowa High School Volleyball Championships. 5A champion, mm. Ankeny Centennial swept Bettendorf three to zero. And now we're at the 4A matchup where West Delaware won the first set 25-16. And it was Harlan taking set two 25-18. In class 3A, we'll see Mount Vernon versus Solon. That match will start about 2.30. Here's the replay. Yeah, good outside attack from uh, Harlan by Frederick again. She's been uh, doing some damage up there in the front row. 17-15, Harlan on top. Nice effort, yeah. keeping the ball alive. Backcourt attack, Shaven. To have that That's much set. power on a back yeah. row attack, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, she's got a phenomenal top spin swing on both her serve and her spike, but you'll see she takes off behind the back row, keeps the ball in front of her, and uh, Crunches it down, kind of like my, our colleague here, Barb Willis, used to do that for Iowa. <laughs> Barb Randa Willis was a great back row attacker. You'll see her in the 3A match doing the color. Now, BJ Shaven and Barb Willis Randall will be calling that 3A matchup. Mount Vernon and Solon will be back for 2A. Dyke New Hartford and Western Christian. <laughs> I'm excited for that one. A <laughs> rematch of last year, and then number one. Class 1A, Holy Trinity against Central Line. A whole lot of volleyball here all day long in Iowa Public Television. Well, you know West Delaware is, That's cool. That's amazing. is really going to fight right to the end here in this third set here. You know, and two of their three last points have been on service aces, mm -hmm. so uh, tough serving is really going to get them back in the match. Harlan, little tip, nice. and it works. Again, not power, but placement right. on that near sideline. So uh, West Taylor is playing a little bit different defense. They've got their players back, and I think Harlan's recognizing that. And rather than swing away, they're, uh, you'll see the spot open right behind the block, and the, the uh, defense wasn't able to get there. They're creeping back a little bit on their heels there, and when the drop shot came over, they weren't ready. So it's 19-17, play to 25. Another tough pass. Ketchum wasn't able to uh, do anything with that ball, but just bump it up. I mean, how do you dig that? Yeah, exactly. How in the world do you dig that? The block wasn't there, so it was a wide open, clean yeah. shot. So they're changing, changing their little bit of their strategy. They're going to shape in front row and back row. Why not? I mean, she's going to put the ball down. 
but that started with a bad pass, a, a tough pass, a tough serve, and they weren't able to do anything, and, and uh, Harlan converts that to a great back row attack by Shaven. Harlan leads 20 to 17 here in the third. Let's listen in on the Harlan huddle. And deep on a right side attack. Right back, you guys need to hustle and be here and face the middle, okay? Face the right side. Keep out hustling them, all right? Are we, are we good? Okay, stay like this, stay aggressive out there. All right, okay, here we go. One, two, three, five, five. You ready for it? Aggressiveness, <laughs> needing to finish strong. West Delaware just trails by three. The Harlan student section trying to cheer on their school. <laughs> They're having some fun up there. The Highlands taking a little bit of an advantage here in this uh, third set. They're feeling a little better up there. And First, there's West Delaware. You know, out in uh, bold and orange, and they're ready to cheer on their team to get back into this match. Uh, great showing up there with the old and orange and black. My high school colors, Beatrice, Nebraska. <laughs> give, give Beatrice, Nebraska a little love today. <laughs> Again, Sandy Stewart, Eric Braley with the call here on Iowa Public Television. Out of the timeout, it's going to be a point for Harlan, inching closer and closer to that 25-point mark, and yeah. it trying to do it behind the service line. Here's Taylor Wagner. Yeah, one of the keys I said was a strong outside attack, and again, an outside hitting error by Harlan. And now an attack Another error. hitting error. Two hitting errors in a row, un unusual for West Delaware. And again, there's that consistency and composure that's going to come into play for West Delaware. Well, uh, just staying, staying composed and playing consistent all the way through. Here's how rare those hitting errors are as a team cumulative for the season. They hit over 300. Yeah, just when you're aggressive, you do that. But in the state tournament, you've got to pick your poison. When are you going to swing? When are you going to keep the ball in play? Tip to the back corner. Oh, that was close. Really close. Very close. Good really try. Really close. If any part of the ball hits the white it's line in. it's considered in so he just gave the uh, serving zone uh, i believe it was zone uh, six we'll look to serve in the middle back of the court she hit it trying to pick on different parts of the defensive and that's in. Okay. love that aerial view exactly what perfect. you're perfect and you know u.s cellular center after the renovation after the flood downtown Beautiful. cedar rapids just a great venue for volleyball great venue for a lot of activities and uh well 11 kills <laughs> For number 15, Taylor Frederick. West Delaware has to do something. Yeah, Let's out. talk strategy. Are we listen to the coach up early. Going over the top of our blocks a lot because we're late on some blocks. Okay, so get our block up early on those. Okay, defensive points here. Get our weight neutral. Keep reading that back line attack there. Keep reading, okay? Hey, one ball right here. Come on, ladies. So Sandy, explain reading that back row. How, how are they supposed to be able you know, to read, and, and how does that indicate what they can right. do? Well, a good defensive player is going to watch the position of the ball, the position of the attacker, and watch the shoulders and see if this is going to be a hit down the line, across court, because like I said the blockers are late. So that defensive player is pretty much out there on their own trying to dig it up. So really trying to read the hitter's uh, intent to attack the ball by their body position and where the ball is. In the net, called against West Delaware. Looks like it might have gone down for a point, yeah. but because of that call now, it, it's set wow. point. Who would have thought on game one if it would have been to this point? So I think it was just a overswing on the hitter and a net violation for give West ha Delaware. Give Harlan all the credit in the world for believing mm -hmm. and fighting hard. West Delaware gets the point. So very unusual to come back at this point, 24-19. Not saying it's impossible, but uh, you know West Delaware has got their work cut out if they want to try and uh, and get this set. They're back in their prime lo prime rotation though with their uh, top server Dave Putts back here to serve. Still set point. Hartland needs just one more to move ahead two sets to one, put them one step closer to defending the 4A team title. Nice pass. Here's the quick set, and that's what we've been seeing all day yeah. long from Harlan as they celebrate. Almost too easy at that point. You've got to really make them work to pass that ball, and it's uh, we'll see if West Delaware can uh, get their composure back and get back into the match in set four. We'll be back with more right after this from the U.S. Cellular Center in downtown Cedar Rapids. 
'Twas December in Iowa when all through the town not a family was stirring. They'd gathered around. By their TVs they sat with anticipation of programs to come in great celebration. Now Kristen, then Jackie, and Bing Crosby too. Poirot and Downton, some history for you. Make your life better, enjoy an old tune. Shows from Iowa all the way to the moon. Starting on Friday, November 28, come programs and guests to make viewing great. Hi, I'm Charity Nebby. Celebrate the holidays with us on Iowa Ingredient. You want to try one of the Charlotte? Charlotte, that is beautiful. We've invited several that. members of our Iowa oh, Public Television family for a visit to talk about their There's holiday traditions like and delicious Porter recipes. Yeah. And we're all bringing our families, too. And we are making Fudgens. It's a flavorful and fun-filled IPTV family holiday celebration on Iowa Ingredient. Harlan in the driver's seat right now. Didn't look pretty in that first set, falling 25-16, but they've turned things around, winning set two 25-18. And here are highlights from the third set. 25-19, Harlan victorious. You know, they went back to their uh, their key player that's carried them most of the year, and that's uh, Iowa State recruit Jess Shaven. And she was a, a big player and a big factor in that win in game three, set three. A lot of highlights, and you can see exactly what the plan of attack is for Harlan, but what do you do if you're West Delaware to try and figure out where she's at and how to slow down? You know, it has been difficult. They've switched her to the front row to start the match and uh, or start the set, so I think they really need to get into their quick offense, uh, move the ball out to the sides of the court, keep her moving, uh, and get hopefully pass the ball better. They just haven't got the ball to catch them to run their offense. And they've really struggled to, to do that. So, but like in game one, when they were running that quick pass, the quick set, they took care of Harlan with no problems. But they let him get back in the match. And as I mentioned early in the in the match here, we talked about keys of the game is consistency and confidence for uh, West Delaware. They've uh, they did it against Marion. We'll see if they can do it against Harlan. Both these teams played incredibly tough schedules, and it's going to be now determined. With everything on the line, can Harlan close out and win in four? Or can West Delaware dig a little deeper and find a way to win the state exactly. championship? And both teams, you know, with the seniors are trying to make a, a great statement on the way out of, of their high school career. And with Harlan being a, a double, a, a two-peat, because they're repeating a state champion, you know, it would be a great for West Delaware to kind of take Shaven down. That, you know, she's the, one of the best players in the state. So. A lot to play for on both sides of the ball. Again, the keys for Harlan, as you can see, big game from Shaven. Well, I'd say 26 kills <laughs> through, through three sets. Yeah. Uh, definitely works for that, an aggressive serving. Exactly. And, you and know, for West Delaware, their keys. Keys are going to be, again, aggressive serving uh, and getting their offense going again. When they run a quick offense, it really takes Harlan out of their game. So the passing, Ketchum's going to have to have a great uh, game setting uh, variety of attackers that they've got uh, covering the court. Both teams have been a little hesitant on defense. I think a little nerves. They're stopping to, you know, for balls instead of just going all out. So uh, scrappy defense, but you know, this is it. You got to leave it on the court. Har Harlan's looking a little loose right now and talking with the team. They were excited the last two nights. They, after they played, they went back to the hotel, and for the first time in this 4A yeah. matchup, Harlan gets the first point. Yeah, that's unusual. You haven't seen that happen. Little nerfs there, so. so. They go back to their hotel, and they have a Nerf gun war. Really? They it's like a fun. And you know, the thing about any high school sports, especially volleyball, you come, become so close throughout the year that your friends on and off the court, you'll have friendships, friendships that last your lifetime. Yeah, they were excited talking about not only the chance to play for a state championship, but the friendships. They said, we're just like yeah. family. We're so best family. friends out there. Yeah, it's great to see. It's a, like I mentioned earlier, you know, Iowa Girls Athletics, if you've got a daughter, granddaughter, niece, uh, get them involved in sports. It's just a, a great experience for them to be out, to learn to play together, teamwork, perseverance, overcoming uh, adversity. Sure. You know, it's just a great life skill activity to get any young person involved with sports. Well, it makes you a well-rounded individual, and that's very important in this day and age. Three to zero, wow, so Harlan. Got a turn of events here with uh, Harlan taking some uh, control here. It's a game of runs, and right now Harlan's in the midst of one to start this fourth set. If Harlan wins, they're your 4A state champions. If West Delaware wins, we go to the fifth and final set. Shaven. 27 kills. 
You know, if, you, if they get the ball to her like that, uh, she's going to be tough to stop. Harlan, 40 wins, just two losses on the year. They won a state basketball title this year, defending state champs. And I tell you what, Sandy, it is not easy to be a defending champion and have the number one, yeah, the bullseye target. on your back all yeah. year long. You've got the target on your back. You know, West Delaware came in here like a team of destiny, and they're going to have their work cut out here and set forth. You only get two timeouts, and West Delaware wants to take one now before this one gets away from them here. Let's go and see what Harlan has to say in their huddle as we listen in to Angie Spangenberg. Aggressive. One, two, three, five, Well, it's short, okay. simple, and that's what she's been saying all day. Aggressive. You know, why not? You're, everything's working. Don't mess it up. Just let him go out there and don't let him overthink anything. Just keep playing. You know, since they've been going to uh, Shaven, <laughs> starting in that left front rotation, that's made the key for them. We can hear to Coach Mather. As they close out, you get about 45 seconds, mm -hmm. not a real long timeout, mm -hmm. but just trying to collect yourself and talk a little bit of strategy okay. again the road to state has not been easy it's been a long season we're in mid-november and it's all on the line right here right now in cedar rapids both teams coming in with only two losses throughout the entire year and they were both the two larger school teams another hitting air for west delaware they're really out of sync right now how do you get back into sync you know, though I think, uh, uh, do, you, do you make a substitution I think, you know, it comes to individual, individual uh, performance. You know, you've got to dig down. Someone's going to have to make a play. Your senior leader, someone's going to go out there and just do something to kind of spark the return like that. There's the first point of the fourth set. But they've dug themselves a little bit of a hole here, down 6-1 to one to a very good Harlan team. And again, perfect set. Kristen we Kirsten Wegman on the outside, uh, their second leading hitter, uh, 239 kills throughout the year, did a great job there to kind of get the ball back for uh, West Delaware. Another high reach, and it's just very impressive to see one of the elite players in the state. Not every pass, not every set is perfect, but she's able to use her athleticism. Yeah. She does something with the ball every time, no matter what, if it's uh, you know perfect in tempo or a little off, she'll, she'll work with it and, and find a spot in the, on the court there. Very tough to defend. Nice quick set. Good Trying try. to catch yep. Harlan sleeping, yep. and they give him a taste of their own medicine I with think, a quick set. Yep. Harlan's adjusted to that quite well. I mean, they've been early in the match. Uh, they were running that quick set to the middle. Harlan wasn't there, but they've definitely adjusted to that attack. And again, Shaven got a great cutback. Cutback swing to uh, bring it inside the block for the kill. Down by seven, West Delaware. They're on the right side of your screen, Harlan. On the left side. Look at that hustle. Almost. You love the hustle, but <laughs> we're running out of opportunities here, down by eight. And interesting, looking at the scores, we really haven't had a close one. Yeah, I mean, West I Delaware won the first one 25-16, but then it's been relatively lopsided with Harlan winning 25-18, 25-19. Here's what West Delaware has to say in their huddle. Second and final timeout yeah. taken. Okay, make sure you got something coming at them, okay? Hey, defensively, we had a triple block up there. It might happen. That's okay. I'd rather have a triple block than a single block. You guys did fine at getting that depth there. You have to. Okay, they're just going to have to read that block short or that tip short. Hey, last timeout we got here. We're going to force them to take a timeout, though, here in a little bit. Okay? Go out there. Play with heart. Play every point as hard as you possibly can, all right? Keep pressing on that block. Come on, Hawks. Playing with heart. Great advice. You know, just leave it on the court and uh, go all out. I think with the triple block, it was a little different defensive scheme for, uh, for West Delaware. They were all a little deep, and uh, again, Shaven, to credit, tipped over a triple block, and that's what you do when you're a great hitter. Yeah, you got to throw about everything in the kitchen <laughs> sink to try and slow down Shaven. 30 kills. Amazing. You know, we've got the libero Claver. Again, we mentioned earlier, she's one of uh, a triplet set of triplets. But there's a great kill. Gets it through the block as Wegman on the outside. Wegman's come through strong for a West Delaware. Several, several key moments. When they needed a kill, she's been there for him. And again, right there, she did the same thing. Trying to turn the tide and get the momentum back uh, for West Delaware. Trailing by seven. The fourth set of the Class 4A matchup. The winner 
is a state champion, oh. and they'll join Ankeny Centennial, who took care of business against Bettendorf. Now that was definitely some miscommunication, mistiming there. I don't know if the back, uh, I think the, uh, the hitter in the back wasn't expecting that kind of a set. She went up quick, and uh, a lot of mistiming on that one. How important is communication you know, in the just, sport of volleyball? <laughs> Yeah, it's, you've got to be talking all the time. Um, yeah. Teams that are quiet, you're not going to win. You've just got to talk, talk, talk all the time. Communication is so critical. Being a true teammate, helping out your teammates, yeah. let it go where you're at. Exactly. Don't where want to have collisions where on your the court either. Where your blocker is, where the hitters are. You bet. If the ball's in or out, if you can't see and you're playing the ball, your other teammates are watching for you. Great dig in the back though there by. Good, good tip coverage by Harlan. They picked that up as well. Here's West Delaware on the attack. Harlan's there defensively. Shaven trying to get her 31st kill. And the point to Harlan. Try, almost, a, almost a nice dig out of the back row by Toll, but a little too much on it. And uh, catch him unable to dig it out of the net for West Delaware. So uh, going to be a tough road back here for West Delaware. But they, you know, you've seen him play that well. I, I don't count him out. Again, Harlan beat Solon last year. Solon. Now playing in class 3A. They're playing right after this yeah. as Barb Randall and BJ Shaben will have that one for you as Mount Vernon defeated Red Oak 3 to 1 and Solon swept Nevada. Well, that will be a great match. It will. Solon, Mount Vernon, and 3A, and they're about half an hour away. And, and 10, close to Cedar and, Rapids. And they're too. Uh, 10 miles apart from each other, so they could have played in their backyard. They're pretty much mm -hmm. in their backyard. That'll be coming up in the 3A. But right now we got a, a fantastic 4A match here on our hands. West Delaware trails. Harlan is playing good defense as well. And that wasn't there in the first yeah, set. Yeah, no, Frederick has really picked up her game since game one. She's come to play. Great defensive blocks up there. Great slide attacks, but yeah, perfect. You can see your hands up quick. They're ready for that. So West Delaware's got to make some adjustments, and uh, they're, you know, they're used to that middle block. They've got to get the balls to the outside, I think, to uh, make a difference. Nice press over the net. That one's down for the kill. Just like that. Down but not out. They down think, 12 to 5. You think they heard me? I, I, it's like, you get the ball to the outside. That works. <laughs> well, I've listened to a former <laughs> collegiate coach. You know what you're talking it about, works. Sandy. Move that ball around. Make the blockers work. Oh. Nice attack on the outside there. And you can see the wow. celebration jumping Claver. for joy. The other Claver. They got an Asia, and there's El Claver. The two sisters. She doesn't two have a lot of action. That's just her second kill today. She took her opportunity and, and uh, really had a nice swing there to put the ball down. Isn't that what life's about, you though? Know, you get a little Seizing confidence. those opportunities. Get up and take care of business, you bet. 13-5. Fourth set. Harlan hoping it's the fourth and final set. West Delaware trying to force yeah. number five. You know, they are really exploiting that offside uh, defensive player with the tip. They're expecting those strong hits, and uh, West Delaware just isn't adjusting to those off-tempo off uh, shots right behind the block. Fourth straight state tournament appearance for Harlan, third straight for West Delaware. Both teams are filled with seniors exactly. that will not be here next exactly. year. You know, West Delaware has uh, several three, four uh, multi-sport athletes. A couple of their players are looking to go on to play at the college level. We know Shaven's going to Iowa State. So speaks to the quality of the play here in the state of Iowa. Just a tad out of bounds. Harlan, the back row let it go. And it's now 15 to six. Yeah, it's just a As little you bit. see to... the slow motion. Yep, yep. good call. I think they tried to run it quick and the ball was a little too low and couldn't quite get on top of that. Another perfect pass. That beautiful, one's in. Beautiful cross court kill right inside the block. Kristen Wegman on the year, 239 kills, a 2.44 attack percentage. You can see when that pass is there, Ketchum puts a beautiful quick set to the outside, and that's hard to defend. <laughs> so Harlan gets a one, and the, that's an easy one. Coach Mather's like swallowing his tongue right now. Mm -hmm. like, oh no, don't miss that soon. <laughs> Well, tough, because every tough. point, because they're inching yes. closer and closer to the 25-point mark. You know, when you're behind, you don't give a point away on a missed serve. You just can't do that. There's the attack. Right close to the net. And just impressive how she's yeah. able to cut it That's that tough. close down the, down the side kind of the net. a great save on a real tight high pass and uh, put it up in play that Shaben can do something with it. 
31 kills. Coach is looking really and now another service there. ace, yeah. and they're starting to run away with this, opening up a double-digit yeah. lead out of both timeouts. Yeah. And so we'll see if he maybe uh, does a substitution or tries to something to maybe slow down the momentum. He's, like I said, he's already used his two timeouts, so not a lot of options to change uh, things up here. And West Delaware knew that it, this was not going to be easy. Defending champion, one of the best players yeah. in the state, yep. but they're trying to throw something at Harlan yep. that they hadn't seen with that tempo. Right. And again, a little bit of a hitting air there. The, the ball went into the net, the block didn't touch it. So a uh, big mountain to climb for West Delaware here. We'll give credit to West Delaware. Again, these girls, most of them played in last year's state tournament. They've matured, they stuck with it. And to be state runner up, oh, yeah, if that's definitely. what the end result is, well, there is a big accomplishment there. Harlan blocks it out of bounds. West Delaware with the point. There's a little bit of a spark to West Delaware. and. Uh, a little bit off the hands on the, on the block on the right side. But Harlan's still definitely in control in this set, uh, looking to win their second straight uh, state tournament. Well, in volleyball, because yep. they won basketball as well. So in the past 12 months, they've won two state championships. And if they hold on yeah. for a win here, it'll be three titles in one year. It's pretty, very impressive, very impressive for Harlan. Well, Stella with a little bit of a, a push here to try and uh, Get some points back. Nice Strung together there. a couple points. That was Ketchum taking that second ball over. We weren't quite ready for that. In system. Mm. West Delaware. They covered that second ball over, ready for it. Out of bounds, last touch. Yep. By West Delaware and the Hawks. Now trail 20 to nine, and here's Let's that net here. cam. Kind of a night. Tight uh, play, but smart, smart hit by uh, Taylor Wagner there to use the block, and uh, block needs to turn that in so the ball bounces back in the court, not outside the court. It's one thing to block it, but then to guide yeah. where it's deflected. Kind of, kind of rotate those shoulders and turn those hands back in so the ball stays in. And here we have a couple hitting errors. West Delaware, we talked about consistency and composure. Uh, just not quite there uh, in this uh, set four. Starting to unravel, almost another service ace. Mm -hmm. Harlan Tough. looking looking Tough. like one of the best teams. Yeah. They can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone. Ankeny yeah. Centennial just won in 5A. Well, I think this Harlan team could. Yeah, they've, they've really uh, taken West Delaware out of their game. They've gotten their pass going. They're a strong offense. And that kept. one's down. No quit, though. And catch from them. the Hawks. You know, when you've got a pass like that, you've got so many options. You can set, you can attack, and that's when they've done their best. So uh, it's going to take uh, some more, a lot more of that for West Delaware to try and uh, claw their way back into making this uh, a set here in set four. At the conclusion of this match, we'll have the all-tournament team, the runner-up presentation, and the championship <laughs> trophy presentation. And again, in the on-deck circle, B.J. Shave and Barb Randall as they'll be calling the 3A matchup. That'll start around 2.30 between Mount Vernon, who is 33 and 7, and Solon, who is 32 and 8. Here we go. So it's match point. Harlan needs one more point to defend their state title here in Class 4A. Here's the serve. And it's a service ace. The exclamation <laughs> point, and Harlan is your Class 4A okay. state champion. Fantastic. Congratulations to Harlan. Uh, made a huge adjustment after getting pretty much blown out in set one. Uh, phenomenal three straight sets to win the match, and uh, also kudos to West Delaware. Impressive team. They fought through uh, tough matches, and uh, no shame in finish second in the state of Iowa. Here's a look. They changed the rules of volleyball a couple years ago. The ball yeah. can hit the net. It dribbles over and falls to the court. Well, that's a great way to win and a really tough way to lose. <laughs> but that's the way the volleyball bounces sometimes. The Harlan student section showing their appreciation. And there you see winning in four. Coming back after getting blown out 25-16. It was Harlan and the Cyclones took over in sets two 
three and four. Tears <laughs> of happiness. Tears of happiness, and you think about all the pressure to repeat. You know, the pressure of, Sh of uh, Shaben going out, one of the top players in the state, you know, not having that crown. Uh, you can say you were a state champion uh, when you were a senior. All that pressure, all that emotion is, uh, is shown there on their faces. Here now is a look at the all-tournament team with public address announcer Scott Whirling. Presenting the 4A awards are the members of the Girls Athletic Union Board of Directors, Greg Thomas, Roger Francis, Greg Ebling. The 2014 4A All-Tournament Team. From Harlan, Kenzie Swanson. From West Delaware, Emily Toll. From Clear Creek, Amana, Natalie Brimeyer. From Marion, Isabella Sade. From Harlan, Taylor Frederick. From West Delaware, Carly Ketchum. And your 4A captain. From Harlan, Jess Shaman. That's a look at your Class 4A All-Tournament team. Harlan had three players in Kenzie Swanson, Taylor Frederick, and the team captain with 31 kills in the championship, Matt's Jess Shaban. West Delaware represented by Emily Toll and uh, Carly Ketchum. Here's a look now at the trophy presentation to the runner-up and champions. Ladies and gentlemen, your 4A state volleyball runner-up, the West Delaware Hawks and coach Brent Mather. Now, your 2014 4A champions, the Harlan Cyclones and Angie Spangenberg. Back to back state championships for Harlan. They join Ankeny Centennial as state champions here today. Ankeny Centennial, your 5A champs. And there's a look at your 2014 4A champions. Well, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. That's right. You know, it's a game of ups and downs. Harlan showed their true mettle today after losing uh, first set and uh, making some adjustments, coming back very strong. You look at the all-tournament team, you know, half of the players come from Harlan with the captain, Jess Shaben. Wish her all the best at Iowa State. Uh, there's Sutter Swanson, and um, as well as Frederick, a junior. She'll be back next year. And also West Delaware. They showed themselves very well today. Uh, their, two of their players made the all-tournament team, but not quite enough today to overcome Harlan's attack. West Delaware ends their season 45-3. and three. They can hold their head as high as they are the state runner-ups. And Harlan, 41-2 and back-to-back -back champions. Well, we're just getting started here. Two trophies have been handed out. Three more to go. We'll move to the 3A matchup. Followed by 2A and 1A. It's a fun-filled day of Iowa High School girls athletics only here on Iowa Public Television.
Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Volleyball Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Whether you live in rural Iowa or in the big city, the Iowa Network Services family of companies and your local provider are working together to keep you connected. By offering technology and business solutions like internet, data networking, and other business services. The INS family of companies keeping communities connected today and tomorrow. Fairway, along with Mondelez Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay is a proud sponsor of the 2014 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Volleyball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting special. You're viewing Iowa Public Television, celebrating 45 years as your statewide network.